Welcome to this demonstration on NetApp Cloud Volumes for AWS. First, we're going to log into NetApp Cloud Central. I'll provide my credentials. And then we're going to choose Cloud Data Services and then Cloud Volumes. Now let's create a Cloud Volume. From the user interface, we'll click Create New Volume. We'll provide a name for our volume. We can use the automatic volume path or we can type over that. Here I'm going to call this Vol1. Then I'll choose a service level from standard, premium or extreme. I'm going to need extreme because I need high performance. And we're going to allocate five terabytes of capacity to this volume. I can add a tag and then I can set an export policy. Here I'm going to say every client in this range can read write. I can add a separate rule and say all others can read only. Now I'll click Create. A few seconds later the volume will create it and I'll get an export path. I can click to see the mount instructions and I can copy and paste that mount command over to a running instance. Now we paste that command and decide what our mount point needs to be. And we've now mounted. Let's use DF and we'll see we have a 100 terabyte cloud volume already mounted to this instance. Let's see if we can write. So we're going to write that to a file called test. That looks like it passed. Let's see if we can see the contents of that, which should be the DF command output. And we can see that file is listed. Now let's create a cloud volume and export over SMB. Here I choose SMB. I will give the volume a name. I can choose my volume path. I'm going to call this SMB share one. Then I get to choose the service levels. I can choose some standard premium and extreme, and I can allocate capacity. Here I'm going to allocate 10 terabytes. I can add a tag, and I can decide to enable data encryption. For Active Directory, I can choose existing settings, or I can type in the DNS server, the domain, the NetBIOS name I need, and then the user and password. Once my volume's created, I can click on Show Mount Instructions, and these are instructions for Windows. So I'll copy that. I can now go into a Windows server, Map Network Drive, paste that volume path, and mount my volume. Once it's mounted, we can create a file. We can go edit that file and add some content. And we can take a look at the properties of our share. We see that it's 100 terabyte share. The Cloud Volume Service allows us to create volumes and export them over both SMB and NFS. So the, here I create a Cloud Volume, I choose Dual Protocol. I give it a name, just like for NFS and SMB. I can choose the volume path, pick the service levels, allocate the capacity. Here I get to choose the security style, so I have a choice of NTFS or Unix styles. I can add an export policy. And then I need to choose my Active Directory settings. Once the volume is created, we see export paths for both SMB and mount instructions, and the same for NFS. Cloud volumes provide fast and efficient snapshots. We can set a snapshot policy, define how many snapshots we want to keep, and the time we want the snapshot to be taken, both for hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly. Once we've defined our policy, we can enable it and then save the changes. We can also create on-demand snapshots. We can choose to name them or use the automatic name, and then create the snapshot, literally within seconds. Now if we go back to our Windows, or potentially a Linux server here, I'm going to use Windows and accidentally delete a file or something else happens to that volume. 
I can click on the properties and within Windows look at previous versions and I can mount the previous version and I can start to recover my files. Here I'm going to copy the file and paste it to the original volume. I can open the file and see I have my important content. With NetOps Cloud Volume Service, we can rapidly clone new volumes from snapshots. To demonstrate that, I'm going to create a new volume called Test, and I'm going to create that from a snapshot of our production volume. I'm going to call the volume Clone. Again, I could choose the service levels, I could set the allocated capacity separately. Once my volume is created, I can see that from a show mount, and I can simply mount it. Now we've mounted it, let's take a look at the pack capacity. We see there's already 1.6 gigabytes of data in that volume. If we take a look, we already see uh, 16 files in there. Now let's look at how we can synchronize data to or from our cloud volumes. So I can choose a volume, I can select sync and create a new relationship. From here, I can use the cloud volume as a target or as a source. Here I'm pasting in the IP address of a Unix NFS server and it's already found the, the export. Now I create the relationship. It's going to scan the files and then start synchronizing them to our cloud volume. And we see we've already done nearly 2,000 files. I can go to my client, go into that directory for the cloud volume here. And let's see if we have those files. We see that we've copied them successfully. I can choose different schedules. Here I'm going to say let's synchronize every hour. And I can also say let's synchronize right now. It's going to update and see if there's any new files. It's running and it's detected nearly 300 new files in about 31 megabytes. With NetApp Cloud Volumes, we can adjust the performance on the fly. To demonstrate that, I'm going to run a benchmark from four different servers all to the same volume. I see that I'm getting about 250 megabytes a second, both reads and writes, and that may not be fast enough for my application. So here I can change the service level from standard to extreme, and within seconds I will see my performance should quadruple. Indeed, now I'm seeing about a gigabyte a second, both reads and writes. The NetApp Cloud Volume Service provides a full RESTful API. An online documentation will show you how to get started, where to find the keys, and some basic commands you might want to run. So let's see what we can do with this. So here I've created a script that will create a 100 terabyte volume, mount it to an EC2 instance, and see how long that took. We see that we've mounted the volume in 8.4 seconds, that's including creating the volume. The volume is 100 terabytes in size, that's 0 to 100 in 8.4 seconds, and that's reflected in the user interface. Thank you for watching, and to learn more, go to cloud.netapp.com.